The Bahamas cruise port is a hot topic in the cruise forums. Some folks love it, while some pledge to stay on the ship and encourage others to do the same. After 19 cruises, this was our first ever port day in the Bahamas, and we decided to give Margaritaville a try. Is this the excursion for you? Stick around and find out. There were four total ships in port the day we visited, which we knew pre-cruise. Pro tip, check websites like cruisetimetables.com to see how many ships are in port at each of your stops. It might help you plan whether you choose a super busy public beach, which we'll also show you in this video, or an excursion to a less populated location. The Bahamas Cruise Port unveiled a complete overhaul in the middle of 2023. There's a new terminal building, event and entertainment spaces, a 3,500 seat amphitheater, and a junkin' new museum that tells the story of the nation's culture and art. There is plenty of shopping for all kinds of items from souvenirs to gifts for those at home, and they even have a hair braiding pavilion for those searching for that island look. If you do decide to simply get off the ship and walk around the port, there is plenty to see and do. The cruise port is very easy to navigate, and even though we did not have transportation to Margaritaville pre-booked, it was very simple to find a group van to drop us off. There is an actual taxi stand, and port employees walking around are very helpful. Taxi transportation to and from Margaritaville was $10 per person, and of course, we tipped our hardworking driver. It was about a seven minute drive from the port to Margaritaville. There were very kind resort employees at the entrance who directed us right around the corner to the ticket building. We had already purchased tickets from resortforaday.com, which is a really easy site to find all kinds of resort locations in the Eastern and Western Caribbean. The employee at the booth verified our purchase, gave us wristbands for the day, and directed us around the corner into the pool and water park area. The beach resort area consists of two pools with the water slides in the middle and the lazy river winding around the entire area. In this area, there are plenty of loungers to relax in the sun or the shade. And here's a pro tip for this resort. The resort building itself blocks the sun from many of the loungers until the early afternoon. If you want in the shade, choose a lounger closer to the building. On the other hand, if you're going for that golden Bahamas tan, pick a lounger closer to the beach and away from the building. Near the large pool, there are private cabanas for an additional fee. They feature two loungers with a table in between, an umbrella, and a comfy four-poster bed. They have personal entries into the large pool and the lazy river. We decided to splurge and rented a cabana. The beach resort fee itself is $110 per adult and $55 per child. For a cabana on Resort for a Day, we paid a total of $326.58. That included a platform fee and tax. For us personally, we decided the cabana wasn't worth the extra cost, but keep in mind, it does give you a larger area for your family and your belongings, so it might be the perfect situation for you. The cabana rental also comes with bottled water and some packaged goodies like chips and candy. By the entry is the towel stand. If you're coming from a cruise ship, you do not need to bring your ship towels. I'm telling you, having one less thing to carry was nice. There are also lockers near the towel stand as well as the restrooms, which we found to be very clean and well-maintained. The middle of the park features the water slides. This is definitely a resort that is family friendly. The large pool is very shallow on one end with small fountains for kids to play in and the water slides and lazy river can keep the kids busy for hours. A helpful tip for the lazy river is just to jump in and grab an empty tube. There is no pickup place for tubes. It's first come first served as you see one floating by. Keep in mind, we haven't even talked about food or or the flow rider yet so let's get to it there are two eating venues to order from wait staff will bring you a menu and your food at your lounger or you can walk to the order window yourself and take advantage of the outside seating nearby feeding frenzy is open from 11 to 5 and features dishes like grilled chicken wrap blackened fish or steak tacos fish and chips and chicken tenders 
by the time we ordered, which was about 1130, they were already out of chicken tenders, unfortunately. The other eating venue is Vacation Cafe, which serves breakfast from 7 a.m. to 11, lunch from 12 to 3, and dinner from 5 to 10 p.m. We ordered the coconut shrimp from Vacation Cafe and seasoned fries from Feeding Frenzy, knowing we could eat again once we got back on the ship early afternoon. The shrimp were $18 and the fries were $9. We had bottled water and packaged snacks like chips and candy that came with our cabana rental. This was probably a tie for the best food we've ever had at a beach resort. Just FYI, the other best was Nachi Kokum in Cozumel. You can find these menus online at margaritavilleresorts.com under the Eat and Drink tab. If you have found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more cruise and travel content. Thanks so much. As we move past the second pool and the eating venues, we get to the other end of the resort, which includes the Flow Rider. As you can see, there was not a crazy long line for participation. This might be a great place to send your kids to burn off some energy. The rope you see here is technically the end of the paid part of the resort. There's literally an employee that sits at this entry checking to make sure folks have a resort bracelet. However, this is the 12 volt bar, which is run by the resort. It leads right down onto a public beach called Junkanoo Beach. This is the beach that is closest to the downtown area. As you can see, it's one of the most popular beaches in Nassau. There is no entry fee to find a bit of sand and toss out your own towel. It is also, however, filled with several private companies that will rent you a lounger and umbrella and set them up for you. I talked with a very kind employee who works out of a building right on this end of the beach. They rent all kinds of chairs along with umbrellas and even towels and Bluetooth speakers. Since we always give it to you straight here at All Things Wagner, this was an extremely loud, crowded, and smoke-filled beach. If that is something you don't mind, then this might be the place for you during your visit to Nassau, especially if you're on a tight budget. However, all the beaches in the Bahamas are considered public property. Some other less crowded beaches to consider are Cabbage Beach, Cable Beach, and Arawak Beach, which all have independent traveler reviews on TripAdvisor. At the time of this recording, there are travel advisories for the Bahamas, so please always check that information. And if you choose to head to a public beach, be extremely aware of your surroundings. Now, back to Margaritaville. Even though the beaches in the Bahamas are public property, the chairs and umbrellas in front of the resort are only for resort and day pass customers. They are first come, first serve. There are also resort staff who were attending to those on the beach, just like inside the resort property. On the JJ recommendation scale of one to 10 for relaxation, food, service, and safety, he ranks Margaritaville Resort for the day as an eight. When we were done for the day, we settled up our food bill and simply walked back around to the front of the building. The resort staff grabbed us a cab. If everyone in your party is willing and able, it's only about a 15 minute walk between the port and the resort. The taxi dropped us off right at the curb outside the port, and because the passenger crowd had slowed down, we were able to actually look around the port and do a little shopping. As you enter security for the cruise ship, you will need your Sea Pass card only. The cruise line does provide a tram all the way to the cruise ship, and the line is clearly marked after getting through security. If you choose to make the walk and need a break, most of the cruise lines have a rest area before you enter the ship that includes cold towels, cold drinks, and a seating area. If you have questions about this video, please leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to respond. If you're looking for information on other Caribbean ports, check out these videos here. Be blessed.